You see, when I was on pilgrimage, beloved guardian said whenever the goals were won, a tremendous power was released into the world. National goals and world center goals. And he also made it clear that winning the goals was not the victory. Those goals were the bare minimum. It was when we finished them, out of the completion of the goals, a power was released in every country. That power is going out because of that tremendous power. We can't even measure it. When I was on pilgrimage, I had just come from Wilmette, the start of the beginning year of the 10-year plan, and the house of worship in Wilmette had been completed. And the beloved guardian talked about it, and he told us what we had conquered 100 countries in 11 months since the day of that dedication, of something that never had happened before in religious history, 100 countries in 11 months. And he said it was because the goal was completed and the power was poured out that the master had said when that house of worship was finished and dedicated to public worship, from that point of light, the faith of Baha'u'llah would be carried to all parts of the world. The pioneers were on the move and a hundred countries had been conquered because of that tremendous power. Blessed Bob said, any one follower, one follower of this faith can by the leave of God prevail over all who dwell in heaven and earth. And if not us, who does the blessed duty mean when he proclaimed, he that summoneth men in my name is verily of me, and he or she will show forth that which is beyond the power of all that dwell on earth. And you tell me who was the master talking about when he said, in this century of the latter times, that was this morning when you woke up, wherever you were. That's now, right now, while you're sitting in this room. The Master said, Baha'u'llah has appeared and so resuscitated the spirits that they have manifested powers more than human if they will open their hearts to it. And what soul was our beloved guardian speaking about? Are we exempt, any of us in this room, when he said, one soul, one soul, can be the cause of the spiritual illumination of the cloud. Wherever I look, I see one soul. And if you still think, maybe that's not you, but somebody else, as, as sometimes we all do, then in that same paragraph, in the very next sentence, Shoghi Effendi adds, there is nothing, there is nothing to prevent you from arising and showing that example. And finally, from our supreme universal house of justice, source of all good, freed from all error, sole refuge of a tottering civilization. Forward then, they say, confident in the power of protection of the Lord of hosts, who will use his devoted followers, us, who will use his devoted followers to bring to a despairing humanity the life-giving waters of his supreme revelation. Again, let then the individual Baha'is rise as one man and sweep away every obstacle from the onward march of the cause of God. However unpromising the prospect, Baha'u'llah is able to open doors and change conditions in ways beyond, far beyond our understanding. More, they promise us dependence upon him, Baha'u'llah enables the Baha'is to formulate audacious plans. And now this final bolt of infallible lightning. The House of Justice promises us, quote, however hopeless the prospect may seem, Baha'u'llah will reinforce the believers with his hosts and will open the doors of victory before them. All things are in his mighty grasp. And if we but play our part, total an unconditional victory will instantly be ours. That's five separate sources of divine and Five. All who say we can do it. And we can, and it should be done. They've already assured us if we will but arise and make the effort, we will have that great victory. 
first from the beloved Master. Verily, the perfect and divine, the perfect and divine power will breathe in you with the bounties from the Holy Spirit and enable you to accomplish a thing the like of which hath never been seen by the eye of existence. From the beloved garden, let us pray to God that in these days of world encircling gloom, when the dark forces of nature, of hate, rebellion, anarchy, and reaction are threatening the very stability of human society, when the most precious fruits of civilization are undergoing severe and unparalleled tests, we, the Baha'is, may realize more profoundly than ever that though we are but a mere handful amidst the seething masses of the world, we are in this day the chosen instruments of God's grace, that our mission is most urgent and vital to the faith of humanity, and fortified by these sentiments, arise to achieve God's holy purpose for mankind. This is our duty, our first obligation, Therein lies the secret of the success of the cause we love so well. Therein lies the hope, the salvation of all mankind. Are we fully conscious of our responsibilities? Do we realize the urgency, the sacredness, the immensity, the glory of our task? I entreat you, dear friends, to redouble your efforts, to keep your vision clear, your hopes undimmed, your determination unshaken, so that the power of God within us may fill the world with all its glory. Our wine of the love of God is intoxicating and the faith is so powerful that we win victories no matter how 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 pitiful and puny our efforts. Still we win victories. Beloved Guardian said that if we truly knew who Baha'u'llah was and understood his station and who we were just because we bore the name Baha'is, we would fall to the ground.